So people keep asking me, what is Vesk? Well, baby, don't hurt me. Vesk is actually software, it's not hardware. People generally think that it's hardware. What the hardware is, is an aftermarket controller for one wheels. It's actually used for a lot of other things. It's used for uh, EUCs, yuck scooters basically if you wanted to make a go-kart and put some motors on it you could run vest software and you'd run a custom controller for one wheels there are a couple different ones there's a flip ski flip sky i don't even know how you say it uh, but it seems like the best thing going for now is by makers pev and i'll put a link in the description it's called a little fokker And it's kind of a play on words because FOC is like field of control, some, some sort of something about the magnets and control stuff. I, just say, I don't know a lot about this stuff. I'm learning. I heard about it and I saw uh, Hannes, I think he's in Germany, was doing some amazing tricks and stuff. And it seemed to be like even with this aftermarket controller, it was writing really well. So I was really impressed, and so I had to have one of these things. So I paid an absurd amount of money and had it built in Poland, and they got it to me, and I've had a lot of fun with it. If you've been following my stuff on Instagram, if not, you, you should get on there. I haven't been posting on YouTube much, but on Instagram, I've been putting a lot of my new stuff I've been landing. I've been able to throw down some tricks there. Some of them are just impossible on a standard legacy one wheel with future motion software, like the regular one wheel that everybody knows. So people have been building these VESC software-based systems for, for years, and I've been following them. And I rode one at Float Life Fest a couple years ago, and it rode like basically hot garbage. It, it just it, There's a reason why there haven't been any imitator one wheels, and it's not because of the hardware. Absolutely not. People have always asked me, you know, what is it? What is so special about one wheels? Well, Future Motion's software was inspired. Just absolutely magnificent, and nobody's been able to touch it until a few days ago. So a few days ago, what happened was a revolution. And there's a reason that I haven't posted a video about the VESC stuff and what I've been doing on my YouTube. I actually have a video recorded I never published, and now it's completely obsolete was that nobody's been able to touch the future motion software. It really is amazing. I have to give them credit. I don't have to. I do all the time. I think future motion is fantastic. I'm not one of those people that's all anti-future motion. Yeah, I, I really hate some of their business practices. But as I always say, one act does not a man make. I absolutely appreciate everything that they've done. It changed my life. And now we're going to find that the aftermarket is finally going to be able to unleash some of the potential of the hardware platform. You know, there's a reason why Sony or, or who knows who have never made a one wheel. It was all because of software. Well, now the aftermarket has fought hard enough and we're going to give credit to where credit is due. I've done very little. I've done maybe a little bit as far as the trick side, working with Surf Dato. i got to give him huge credit. I'll put a link in the comments for him too. Uh, Hannes in Germany and Mitch Lustig. I would clap, but I'm using only one hand to hold the, the camera. What's the sound of one hand clapping? I just solved that ancient Cohen. It's this. So we're clapping for Mitch. 
because what Mitch did the other day is he was able to solve a big problem that we'd been having with the software and the way it integrates and operates with the one wheel hardware. We were getting nose dipping. Really frustrating, it made a lot of the tricks that I was doing, especially in grass. I'm filling this in grass, my favorite place to play. This my 49 year old body likes to bounce off grass a lot better than it likes to bounce off a of concrete. Uh, this is a VESC software running board. This board has a Future Motion Factory controller box and it has crammed in there and bolted into the lid a Little Fokker version 3. There's a version 3.1 now. I don't think there's much difference. You can get them from Maker's Pet. But now the software is so good that as you saw me just tooling around here like it was nothing on pretty much the worst surface that Vesk has had to try to navigate. It was always pretty good on flat ground. It was getting pretty good on trails. The nose dipping was a bit of an issue. But on like random grass where the, the where it's when it's hitting bumps they're kind of random it would mess with the IMU. I'm not going to bother to explain what that is at this point. So now we've got this software that's like buttery smooth. I'm rolling through grass, fairly high speed. You can hear that motor, just happy. Just happy, just rocking and rolling. It is so good. Now, before you jump off and go buy and order one of these things, I'm going to warn you, it is user hostile. That's the phrase I use. You hear user friendly a lot. It is not. It is not at all. There's a lot that needs to be done. You're going to go way down the rabbit hole. There, Maker's Pev is now starting to offer solutions that are a little bit more turnkey, but still you're going to expect to be doing a lot of... It's a lot less where Future Motion is kind of like iOS, Apple, iPhone. This is more like Linux. This is more like you got to program your own and it's gonna take some work. But hopefully that explains a little bit. Let's make this brief, because if I make it long and complicated and I do need to do a bunch of editing, I probably won't do it. So I hope you understand a little bit of what's going on. So basically, you can replace everything on a standard one wheel at this point and have nothing original from the factory. That's not normally the case because the motors are not very common right now. So generally, you start with a future motion motor. You can use any motor, pretty much any motor. And you can use, yeah, probably easiest and cheapest to start with a future motion battery. Why not? The, the used batteries are cheap. You can use pretty much any battery. You can use batteries that have way higher voltage output. You can use higher range batteries. You can use all sorts of batteries. I'm actually running without a BMS on this board, and I have been for months, no BMS. There's a whole lot of reasons behind that. It's way beyond the scope of this video, but let's just say you can use pretty much any battery. You don't really have to use a BMS, and if you do, it complicates things a bit. I'm using stock foot pads. You can use any foot pads you want. You can use any rails you want. These are grounder rails. These are irrelevant. They're a lift kit that's not being used right now. Any tire, you know, of course. Same as with any future motion wheel. But the controller, you can either 3D print a box that will fit the controller, and then you, you so there's gonna be some kind of, if you're not handy at all, not mechanically inclined, probably not for you yet. You're gonna to need to put it together. Uh, like I said, mine was built into a future motion box because I like the sturdiness of it. I like the lid solution. It was available, because sometimes I smoke controllers <laughs> With the way I ride. Uh, one thing, if you've ever had your controller box, uh, your connectors for hall sensor and foot pad sensor go bad on you and have it need to be resoldered or whatever, that's not going to happen with a uh, Little Fokker style uh, VESC setup because they're attached to the main board and then on a cable to where they're connected. I had that happen for me once, connector was bad, Send me a new connector, plugged it in, good to go. No soldering needed, no cutting, no controller repairs, none of that stuff. So that gives you an idea, a really, really basic idea. I'll put a couple links in the description to send you down the rabbit hole if you want to start learning about this stuff. But until a few days ago, 
it really wasn't ready for prime time. And that's kind of the phrase I've been using. When people ask me about vests, I'm like, eh, it's not ready for prime time. It's experimental, I've been having a lot of fun with it, but it, it does require me getting in chats a lot and reconfiguring software and trying to figure out what each parameter means. But you have absolute control over the board. Like I have this one set with like a 0.5 second delay. It doesn't turn off for about half a second. So I can do flip tricks in the air, land on the board and keep going. You can set it for where both sensors activate at the same time, which like I do, I only have to touch one sensor pad. Or you can set it for uh, like your normal factory. You can set it so that you it will ride upside down. I helped Surf Dato develop that. He did all the hard work, I just did the testing. But we got that working really well. You can see that in some of my videos where I'm riding the board upside down. I don't have this one set in the software to do that right now. So all this fun stuff is available. It's possible. That's going to be the future of the platform. I really hope that Future Motion gets on board with this and allows us more flexibility and control in the software. Because it's just software. They could flip a switch. Julian, by lunch, could have it done and have it opened up to where we can have that sort of control. And then, of course, what drove this and we can be happy for it or you know i get where some people would see that it's unfortunate is that because of future motions predatory practices against the aftermarket and really just doing everything they could to try to maintain control and i get it i'm sure their lawyers told them that they need to maintain control over this but i've always looked at this and i know future motion will see this so i'll tell it to him again like i've been telling julian since 2017 when i first met him at the second race for the rail is that the way i look at one wheels and it's going to benefit everybody is if you were to just not that it's necessarily true or the best way but just think like me about this for a moment let's just say that it's like honda dirt bikes i call it the honda dirt bike model so Honda sells dirt bikes. They sell them stock. They actually put a limiter on there. There's like a little quarter thing in the exhaust that reduces the power drastically. So the first thing most people do when they get a Honda dirt bike is they go in there and pull that little thing out and, and then go. There's a metaphor there. But Honda also races dirt bikes. Well, Honda doesn't race dirt bikes, but teams race dirt bikes. So maybe Chris Richardson race team gets a trailer, gets a truck, I want to go race Honda dirt bikes, or maybe just dirt bikes at the local dirt bike racing track. Well, I get pretty good. Maybe I'm winning races. So then Honda says, hey, Chris, I'm going to help. I'll send you some replacement parts. We'll put our name on your truck. We'll support you. And you go race Honda motorcycles, and you do well. And then people are going to buy more Honda motorcycles. So great. So what's in the trailer? We got a couple dirt bikes. Maybe Honda supplied them or gave a discount on them. I've got aftermarket parts on the shelf. What does Honda think? Honda doesn't care. Honda just wants you winning races. I go in and mess with my own dirt bike. Of course, I got to tune that thing. I got to put the jets. I got to maybe I'll do something different to the cylinders. I'll do anything I can within the rules of racing. Honda doesn't care. Honda's happy about it. Oh, you're fast. You're winning races. And what, is, what does this do for Honda? Well, maybe Honda will sell some of those race parts, sell some of those modified parts. Ooh, now Honda's making money. But of course, Honda will happily, always, and always has, they'll sell you an engine, they'll sell you an exhaust, any part of the bike, you want a new seat, we'll sell it to you. You know, send it to Honda. Why would you send it to Honda? I do it in my own shop, do it in my own garage, because I'm an enthusiast. I'm enthusiastic about this product. It's fun. I think that's enough of the Honda dirt bike analogy. I think we all get where that's going and how that fits and how that moves everything forward. So thanks for listening to my long videos that are mostly talk and little action. And so here's a couple of clips of me doing things on a Vesk brained little fucker controller there's some future motion parts in there. There's a whole lot of Float Life parts in there, as always, thanks to Float Life, my sponsor. Thanks to Armadillo's, my sponsor. Always keeps me rolling. And peace out. Enjoy. And if you have questions about Vesk, you can hit me with them in the comments. I don't know if I'll be able to answer them or not, but I can probably point you to the people who can. 
And if you already have had any sort of experience with vests, tell me all about it in the comments. Thank you. 